what features in Postgres 10, it's been out now for a year, did you enjoy the most? <laughs> Thank you, Komarang. Um, so uh, we are hoping to move to Postgres 10, but the, there's actually quite a few things that, that really excites us. Um, the uh, jump in parallel queries um, is, I think, a, a very nice feature. Um, in 9.6 it was kind of enabled, in 10 it's quite nice. Um, and there's quite a few other things, but I'll give someone else a, a chance to. Wait events. Wait events. I would say partitioning, uh, which uh, was one of the uh, answers to Oracle. So that was really cool. And then uh, support for uh, native logical replication, uh, which was, again, a very good addition to that. Grab a mark if you want. I think it's not out yet, but I think the, the promise of active active coming in the future, I think that's uh, exciting. Yeah, then wait, you've got a question that you can answer on that one. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. What features of Postgres 11 that is going to come out in the next few weeks are you most looking forward to? Uh, improved partitioning. Um, I think we do quite a bit of partitioning and they're actually, I think, extending the, the subsystem to be uh, much better in, in um, query optimization, if I'm not mistaken. And indexing. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, certainly the uh, hash partitioning, which was missing in Postgres 10, will be there in 11. And as you said, uh, the optimizer in 10 uh, didn't do the best job of partition elimination and that's much better in 11 should be a much more uh, usable uh, feature. The numbering. The? The numbering. The, the new numbering. numbering system. The new numbering yeah, system. Is that what, you, what yeah. you're liking? Yeah, it's a lot easier. It's to a lot better. Yeah, it's a lot better. Makes more sense. Thank you so much <laughs> for making our lives a lot easier. Okay, now here's, an, here's a, an interesting question. Any features in Postgres that are lesser known, more obscure, that you just generally don't talk about in normal, post in normal discussion about Postgres? Is any of those features that you like, those weird, uh, obscure, lesser known features? I keep banging the drum about listen notify. That is just the coolest thing that has ever been built. Um, and uh, for those who don't know, you can actually um, use uh, Postgres as a, um, uh, central, what, what do you call it, uh, um, and well, effectively a listen no notify mechanism. So, um, for instance, what we do is uh, we've got invoices, and obviously you want to see the newest states of an invoice. So we register our little uh, Python app to listen on a specific channel. We've got a trigger on an invoice that'll say, happiness, this invoice changed. Um, and that gets shuffled all the way to the front end that knows to reload. Um, so as someone is posting a, a receipt on an invoice and someone else has got that open, it'll immediately update all of this with WebSockets and it's all asynchronous. So it's, it's all push notifications. It is, it is, yeah, by far the best feature. It's been there forever and um, no one uses it except for us, I think. I think I've got one that's not necessarily Postgres, but it's really cool to me, it's PG Badger. I think it's invaluable in, in determining, yeah, Got support. Um, it's invaluable in determining what went wrong and also to, to go back. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Um, it's on. It's on. Ask remote, as in as close to your mouth as possible. Um, one I really really enjoyed preparing for using preparing for my talk was uh, was a lateral join. Lateral join. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if that's that's too actually uncommon. not that's not a very often spoken about or used. Yeah, um, I found a use case. Uh, I do a lot of string parsing and so on, and I wanted to uh, basically do it in a sort of explored fashion, and that was uh, quite a performance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have to really talk up on this way to do that. So yeah. Okay. So, so nice lateral, feature. lateral join. Yeah. Right. Anything else? Um, I'll say. Uh, I if you're interested in Postgres internals, the page inspect uh, extension. Um, which I don't know if it's little known, I think maybe is well known, but um, basically page inspect, uh, it comes as part of the regular contrib and you can take a raw Postgres page and then dump it out as different formats. So it will decode 
uh, say, a B-tree page, and you can see all the keys and the pointers out to either the other intermediate pages or the leaves, or you can see the actual raw tuples. If you're trying to get an understanding of what Postgres looks like inside and how it works, it's an awesome thing to play around with. Run a SQL statement, page inspect. Run another SQL statement, page inspect again. See what changed on disk. It's a cool thing. Um, trigram indexes, the... Um uh, is it a just Tri or a gen? It, it, yeah. I don't it's know how often. Trigram it, module, but yeah. Yeah, the trigram gen, module. Yeah, the um, and it's an extension that allows you to effectively index free text in, it uh, breaks up the text into little pairs of three characters and allows, allows all kinds of things like sounds like uh, searches to be really, and, really quick. And distance searches. Yeah, yeah, all kinds of wonderful things good to play with. Okay. What would you like to see in Postgres 12? that you haven't seen yet? Built-in RESTful server. <laughs> That's not going to make 12. So it'll be 13. So I, I don't know if it's going to be in 12, but the Z-heap work that's being done uh, by Enterprise DB is uh, very interesting. Um, so it's an undo-based uh, table storage instead of Postgres's uh, uh, insert, delete, copy, you know, append-based store. And uh, Z-heap tables should get rid of a lot of the bloat and vacuum issues, uh, especially for update-intensive workloads. And uh, the design supports 64-bit transaction IDs. So it's, it, it will solve a lot of fundamental Postgres annoyances. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to get in 12, and I'm not sure it's going to solve all the things around index updates in the first release. But it's an interesting direction the community is going. Um, there's patches out there for the undo piece, and, and the Z-heap code is, is published on GitHub. So um, I'm hoping to see that continue to make progress. Uh, uh, I would like the support for uh, logical, uh, logical decoding on the hot standby, mm -hmm. which is not there right now. So it's, it's actually a pain point when uh, moving from your production critical databases to uh, uh, to, uh, to to another database or when you are upgrading it. So, okay. Um, I don't think it's very realistic, but uh, I recently attended a deep learning in Darba, which was held in, in Stellenbosch, and one of the guest speakers was uh, Jeff Dean, who is quite famous as head of engineering at Google. And I was just thinking about it in relations to Cobus's talk about indexing and so on, and he also talked about uh, B trees and different types of indes indices for different data types, and he showed how they are starting to use neural network to actually learn the best in in indexing in databases uh, while it's in production. So I think that was pretty cool, but I don't think we'll see it. Maybe in Postgres 14, 15, or 16. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> but I just maybe it's just me, but that, I found that super cool. I'm not very sure why this has not been um, available. I've been trying to uh, get the, the understanding behind it, but it would be good to have the M views, the, the MAT views, um, generally available um, to your, um, um, uh, uh, your front-end code as you would get tables available to that as well, because at the moment, um, views and tables are available, but MAT views are not available to the general, I mean, okay. for, for, con for consumption. So for you to actually consume that, you'd have to have a view on top of that um, to, to, to actually consume the structure that's available. Oh, in the, in the, okay. In the I see what you mean. I don't, I don't know if that makes any I, sense. I, I, I do, you talk about materialized views. Yes. Correct, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, yeah. I want to go to the previous question. One of the things that I'm actually looking forward to on, in I think it's in now in 11, is auto-refreshing of uh, materialized views, or is that in 12? Um, whether actually, I'm actually, I, I think I remember, I don't know if it's going to be in, in 11 or 12, but w that will actually kind of detect when there is a change and automatically rebuild the materialized oh, okay. view, and you don't so have to back -end thing call refresh, yeah. Okay. So. What do you dislike most about Postgres? That's a harsh question. And I, I don't know if I'll give an, a fair answer, uh, so I don't know if this actually answers the question. 
Uh, but PG admin four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think when, at my previous company, when you do a quote and the customer says, but we want to run an Oracle, and you give the quotes and it's more expensive than your total solution. I think Postgres is becoming a very strong contender. And the day when a customer actually says, we want Postgres, I think I dislike that we're not there yet, mm. but it's getting there. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> Postgres is, is an interesting beast to me coming from uh, traditional enterprise databases. And it, it's, it, my, my mind has to shift around it. I think Postgres um, delegates or gives up too much to the operating system. Um, it's relying on the operating system for the file system, for all the storage, um, for the memory management, um, things like that. I, I get it. Um, it's allowed the Postgres community to focus on innovation more up in the database layer and at the top end with all the different index types. Um, but some, for some enterprise workloads where you want to hammer 5,000 connections at the engine and you need an absolutely stable memory footprint, uh, you need resource governance, things like that, you need uh, direct I.O. and I.O. assurances, Postgres, uh, some weaknesses. So, um, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Uh, better integration for Python as a language. It is integrated, but it is actually not properly secure, and there's a couple of oddities um, when dealing with it. Okay. So, Actually, second that. <laughs> All right, so that was dislike. What do you like most about Postgres? And that can be applicable to your field, too. The fact that you can do crazy things like do face recognition within Postgres, the fact that it's got a very large amount of indexes um, and um, just the fact that there's a really active community um, and even though the default settings out of the box is tuned for a toaster it still performs fairly well um, without too much and you know replication are just yep. everything else is that the Microsoft toaster <laughs> sorry yeah I think the, the Postgres community is incredible um, they uh, are the, the, the committers and the community and uh, the contributors have, have been around for a very long time. Um, they do a ton of work on behalf of the Postgres community, turn out great releases on time. I mean, you can go to the Postgres site and it will show you, it, it lists the release dates for the next year, and they hit those dates all the time, consistently. And so it's a very well-run group, and they, they provide a, a fantastic database. Um, yep. I really like the documentation. It's, it's it with regards to commits, with regards to uh, the new features or anything that they introduce or they push out, uh, with regards to security patches or everything. It's, it's, it's too comprehensive, and it is too good. Except so. there's still some config options that aren't documented fully. Yeah, because nobody knows how to document them. Um, I think the fact that I've never lost any data with Postgres, yep. I have lost data with MySQL, so I think that's what I would like the most. Okay. Um, for me and my uh, current uh, use case, the um, the special uh, extension, um, given the many other extensions I've actually used in the past. Uh, at least remains, at, as far as I'm concerned, um, the, the fastest that, that we've seen. There's a lot of stuff that's actually done for you um, direct out the box, um, and it speaks very well with other um, OGC-compliant um, data sets. Um, I think for me as well, uh, uh, Jason B, I think, oh, is, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, Nobody's mentioned it until now. Yeah. And that uh, room was packed when that Jason B talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, especially in... Uh, environments where the requirements are not always you know, clear, not that easily predictable. Um, I find it a, an excellent type for extensibility. Um, I like the, uh, the, the, some of the uh, operators that, uh, that are available um, in, the, in the database, and the speed at which these things are executed. Um, there's some really interesting things that we've done with the database, and uh, just trying that with other databases, you either end up with the database falling over 
you're just not getting the result in the time that you would expect to, 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 to get it. So even, you know, you know, similar to what he mentioned with a, a system that is, you know, bare bone, uh, mm. performs relatively well. Let's just have one streaming replication. You like it? I like logical. Okay. All right. Thank you. Give me a big applause.